Hello guys, welcome to this week's episode and a new series of Dustbite. Now on this journey, I just wanted to tell you or take you on a small journey of WordStar. So in this week's episode, we're talking about WordStar and I'm gonna be brutally honest, I'm not the expert on it, but I just wanna take you on my journey of how I got it working and just feel free to add your stories in the comments and it's just a bit of an adventure of getting WordStar to work. Now for those of you that don't know, WordStar, way before you had Word and modern word processing programs, um, you had a program called WordStar that was created back in the 80s, I believe. And you used to load it off, usually floppy disk, and use it on old DOS computers and stuff like that. And my uh, vivid memory of it, though I never really used it, was my granddad um, used to use it back in the day when he used to do word processing in his business um, uh, quite a few years ago. <laughs> so this is my journey, and let's go. So I found this floppy disk in amongst all my floppy disks, it's just a random floppy disk that had WordStar on. And I wasn't gonna show this bit, but I just thought that some of you might find this interesting. So I do have an external floppy drive that's already in my computer, you, you get the idea. And I basically got this floppy disk and I thought that some of you might want to see this little bit, mainly for the sound. So let's see if I can plug it in. So we plug it in, hang on a sec, I'm gonna disappear a moment. There it is, you might be able to hear it in a moment. And what I did was, I got a little bit scared because I was unsure how I'd install it. And here are all the programs, as you can see here, all the different files. And I did briefly notice there's one called David, which we may get to that in a minute. And uh, so what I did was, I basically just, um, I'm not gonna copy all of it, because it's gonna take quite a while. But just for this process, you get the idea. I'm gonna copy some of it, which is probably not the best thing to do. Um, but I just want you to hear the sound. So I'm just gonna make a Demi um, folder, Litchi anywhere. I'm just gonna call it temp, just so you could hear the sound. The sound of the floppy disk loading. And let's just see what happens. I, I just basically copied, so imagine I'm copying all the files. You get the idea, but listen. I don't know if you can hear that, but this microphone is pretty good, so hopefully you can. Um, I don't know why, um, the nostalgia of listening to a floppy drive copying files is just brilliant. And you can probably see by my face, that has literally made my day. I know that's really sad, but I don't care. Um, so then what I actually did is I made a subfolder called games in my on my C drive, just because it was just easier, and I'll get to that in a moment. And then I briefly down downloaded, I can't even talk, I downloaded a fantastic emulator called DOSBite, DOSBot, DOSBite? <laughs> DOSBox, um, it's a fantastic emulator, it basically just emulates DOS and you can play games and old DOS programs in it and I've only really ever used it for games. So I've downloaded it reluctantly on my uh, editing machine for your purpose only. And here we are, we're gonna load it up, and I'm just gonna to go to full screen so you can see what we're doing. And if you're getting value so far from this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you're getting value. Now, if I can remember the code, now to do help, you probably remember from the previous one, you can speed up and slow the processor with control, Alt 11, control, Alt 12, but that doesn't worry about this. If you wanna learn more about DOS box, <laughs> you have to put read me or help. Anyway, so, at the moment it gives you Z because it does. And what I would recommend is the reason I've done a subfolder is because I one thing I recommend is you don't want to, you know, damage or accidentally delete any of your files. That's a massive recommendation. So what you do is you type in mount C, and it doesn't actually matter, you can actually call this any letter you want, I found. Colon and then C colon backslash games because that's the folder I made let's see if it works let's see if it works and now if we now go to capital C uh, colon and now we're now in C now this should be a pretend C a pretend hard drive vertical drive that's just basically inside the games folder and it, as far as it's concerned that's your hard drive if that makes sense so if we do D I R there he is, WordStar is ready to go for your work in pleasure. And now I was like, ah, now what? <laughs> so the next part of my journey was this. I typed in DIR 
stroke p and basically this will show page by page because i did realize there's quite a few files and um it hasn't done that that's because i have to type in word star to go inside come on dave get on with it why is it have i typed that wrong oh hang on cd backslash word star i've been complete brain freeze of how to use it so, so, CD backslash Word Star. We're now inside Word Star, inside games, if that makes any sense. I don't know why that graphic has gone there. Let's get rid of that. That's, that's quite annoying. Um, I don't know what that's about. Well, we're now inside Word Star, and now we're going to type in dir forward slash p, and this will show us all the files. So, initially, I was like, oh god, there's a lot of files. I don't really know. I know roughly what some of them are, um, but I was, you know. It, when it came to WordStar, you know, what to do. And, and then I did notice David. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. What's that then? So anyway, I looked through and I was basically looking for what they call an ZEP file or BAT file to start the program or maybe install it. I didn't know if you had to install it. It turns out you don't. Um, this is actually WordStar 6 or 5, I believe. It'll be, it'll be in the uh, thing anyway. Um, I don't know what XXX was. That was just made up. Anyway, so then I worked out the ZEP file was there, and it was just WS, which sounds pretty straightforward. I press enter, and here we are. We are now inside WordStar. We're finally there here on the journey. And the reason why I've taken you on this journey, because I just thought it was just a real nice, you know, journey towards getting there. And um, to be honest, I, I've never used this before. So my next thing, I just looked at the... The sort of the keys to use here. So you got open and document, speed write. That's a new f uh, file. Um, and I did actually open up David, um, and there was just lots of random letters. So when I was a kid, I used to just literally just type anything. And we might actually just get to that just for a laugh, so you can see. Let's just do that. Why not? So let's press D, and let's just type in David. This is how you open a file. So, you know, the, the principle hasn't changed in 30 years when you think about it. And this was me back when I was about five years old, literally just pressing anything on the keys. And this is what this is. So there's literally pages and pages of me just pretending to work. Because what I used to like to do is when I was a kid, my granddad was always typing the speed and I wanted to type that fast, but I couldn't spell anything. Not only was I dyslexic, but I was also about five years old or maybe even younger than that. So I used to literally just type anything. I used to literally just do that and pretend I was working and I'd press enter and I'd do that. <laughs> That's so silly. Well, apparently I think these are key, um, uh, what do you call them? Sort of shoot keys or press keys. I do know what the name's called, but I've been done with all the word. Hot keys, whatever you call them, and the bottom here. And this will give you different options. Um, but I think that's like F1, F2, blah, blah, blah. But the only thing is when I did press that, I went into the internet. Um, so let's see what F4 does. Okay, so that's going to make it bold. So what I do believe from WordStar, I think, is you would have to put in certain programs into it or tend to do stuff you couldn't see what it looked like and then when you'd print if as long as you'd press like bold or you had done the right thing it would come out how you'd put it in i believe that's right it's not like nowadays where you could see it all before you printed it i believe you just had to sort of go with it and hope it works um <laughs> but that's quite cool um what are the little hot keys are there what are you going to call them copy ruler i must admit i don't know what a lot of these and back done so if we put f10 Ah, okay, so we go back now. So we could open a new file. Press S. Yeah, look at that. So, hello, everybody. Hello, all. <laughs> I'm assuming we're going to do this in bold. I think this is right. Bold. Hello. <laughs> uh, I have no idea how to connect this to a printer, so that's not going to happen. So I'm assuming by putting that up arrow B, that will make it bold if you're able to print it. And uh, I'm just going to put... Welcome to the show <laughs> of DOS Bite. <laughs> uh, I'm going to please, I'm probably going to spell this wrong. Please subscribe. <laughs> oh dear, this is so funny. This is brilliant. So, this is WordStar. And I'm sure there's much more you can do with it. Please put in the comments below, actually. Um, 
your stories or if you used it in business or if you used it as just to do like I don't know stories or if you wrote it to write a book I do believe I might be wrong here but I'm pretty sure I can't remember his name the guy that writ Game of Thrones I swear I read somewhere that actually still uses this when he writes his books because he just prefers it for whatever reason um, so that's really cool that's a bit of random information which I believe is true <laughs> oh dear so I've absolutely enjoyed going back in time here. And please, like I said, share your stories below. It'd be fascinating to see what you guys have to say about it and all that jazz. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did get value, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm going to leave you two end cards at the end of the video. They're going to give you absolute value. And look out for the next episode where we'll be talking about retro computers. Ooh. So until next time, see you down the road.